Okay, in this video I'd like to talk about electromagnetic energy density. So I'll talk about what they are, but the first thing I'm going to do is show, uh, just show a definition for each of the, the energy densities. And I'm doing a good bit of this from just from memory, so you're going to have to bear with me if I make mistakes, I'll have to figure them out. So just bear with me while I describe my energy density. We know electromagnetic waves or electromagnetic fields are made up of two components, both the electric and the magnetic components. And we know that these are complementary. We know, for example, that a changing electric field creates a changing magnetic field, and a changing magnetic field creates a changing electric field. So we always have one and the other. And the usual picture people have is something that looks like this. Okay. Something which looks like this. something which looks like this and you have, we'll say in the green might be the magnetic or the electric field and the red might be the magnetic field and they're all they're perpendicular to each other and they're always uh, they're always making each other just as an aside as well by the way the just people might have seen this, the, the wave number okay, or the wave number is 2 pi over lambda and now that actually can become a vector in three dimensional space but the wave number actually gives you the direction of propagation of your wave so that means that your wave vector is perpendicular to your electric field and your wave vector is perpendicular to your magnetic field and your electric field is perpendicular to your magnetic field. In actual fact, it's, uh, it's through proving this equation and this equation that you're able to prove that the electric and magne magnetic fields are perpendicular. Anyway, that's just an aside which I, I, felt, I felt was necessary. So, okay, we know that these two, we'll say the energy um, is made up into electric and magnetic fields. And how do we know that electromagnetic waves carry energy? Well, well, how do we know? Okay, I'm trying to convince you that we had that they can carry energy. And the way I feel to think about it is that we know, for example, that we we um, that our eyes detect light, and light can be thought of in some respects as an electromagnetic wave. So it's you can I think it's reasonable to say to yourself, or you can probably easily convince yourself that the light entering your eye is actually transferring energy into your eye. And also we know, for example, that lasers are made of light and, well, it's been known that lasers can burn things. So you're probably able to convince yourself that electromagnetic waves or light can carry energy. Alright, so if you are doing, let's say, first year physics, or let's say, for, I mean school physics, excuse me, you will come across a relationship which, say, which says that mass is equal to the density times the volume. Alright, so often we'll say, well, what is the density? And we'll, let's just define what density is. Well, actually, let's look at the, the, the mathematical definition. It says it's mass over volume. So I might call this the mass density. All right? And that says it's the amount of mass per unit volume. And if you look at the units, it's kilograms per meter cubed. All right? So it's the amount of mass in every meter cubed that you have. And that gives you your density. So you might say a population density. Now, in fairness, when we're talking about population densities, we're actually using area, but we could use volume as well. And you might say that there are 500 people per cubic mile, or per square mile, excuse me. You could say there are a million people per square mile. Okay, it's the same thing, of course, because we live on, we'll say, live on the flat two-dimensional Earth, if you want to call it, if you want to think about it in that way. We don't have a volume, but you could easily extend this into three dimensions and have the same thing. So, like I said, we have a, a density is a mass, uh, de mass divided by volume, so it's a mass density. All right, the amount of something there is in a cubic meter, or in, in the case of, let's say, population density, it's the amount of people you have in a square, uh, a, a square mile or a square kilometer, or something along those lines. So the amount of something in a certain volume, that's what a density is. All right, so... We've, we've, we've spoken about mass density. So what if we said, what about energy density? What would energy density mean? Now, I'm going to write down something which is not correct, but it might give you, uh, I would say, a, a feeling for it. If I said that, um, I'll, write that I'll write that differently. We'll say rho sub e is equal to the energy divided by the volume. Now, this is not correct, 
but it's just it serves I suppose as a way to start thinking about it so you might say the energy density is the amount of energy in a unit volume it's the same thing as mass density how much mass in a unit volume this is how much energy is there in a unit volume all right so it's just a way of analyzing electromagnetic fields and seeing how much energy you ha actually have for example if you could for example work out the, a volume and find out how much energy you have in a particular volume then you're able to work out the density and the density will get or the energy density which will give you a lot of uh, other quantities which I don't need to speak about now so okay that's the the energy density all right okay I think I'm I think oh yeah just one last thing I'd like to say about that is if you have the energy density right so if you have one sec now you have the energy density and it's not this equation but it, this serves okay, this serves as a reasonable um, kind of introduction if you have the energy density E N E R G why am I writing energy again density okay you have the amount of energy per unit volume all right so if I was to say to you this just so we can kind of get a good feeling for it if you have the energy density how do you get the amount of energy you have all right and this is a, this is another reasonably uh, reasonably straightforward thing well you have the energy density is the amount of energy per unit volume well in order to get the total vo the total energy you will have to find out how many units of volume are, do you have so say for example my unit of volume is one meter cubed that's my unit of volume and I'm saying to you say for example you have 100 meters cubed of volume but you know that the d energy density is equal to I don't know it, uh, just X we'll call it X because it doesn't matter what it is so how would you find out the total energy in this 100 meters cubed volume well it's very simple you'd multiply the amount of energy there is in one unit volume by the amount of, amount of units volume or you the amount of uh, units of volume so you might have like a um, e total would be something like rho multiplied by um, that's the energy density multiplied by 100 and if you look at the units of that, let's look at the units. I, well, in, in our in our made-up formula, our units our, our units would look something like that. You know, head of energy divided by volume multiplied by volume, which gives us energy. All right. Now I know these aren't units, but you, you might. I hope you get a, a, a grip as to what I'm trying to say, or grasp as to what I'm trying to say. So let's actually go ahead and define what electric and magnetic energy densities physically are. So I'm going to say to you that the energy density of an electric field, now I'm going to say it's U. Sometimes people call it rho. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to call it U just for the crack because I'm going to be different. And that U sub E being the electric energy density, energy density is 1 over 2 times epsilon 0 times the magnitude of the electric field to be squared. And U sub B, the energy density of the magnetic field, is 1 over twice mu 0 times the magnetic field to be squared. Now remember, of course, uh, epsilon zero and nu zero are constants, and there this is the permittivity in free space, and this is the permeability in free space. So you could say epsilon zero is it, it is a parameter which describes how well your medium transmits electric fields, and you might say that mu zero, the permeability, is the amount uh, is 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 a is a constant which describes how easily your medium gets magnetized. Now they're, they're, they're kind of loose definitions just to give you a grasp on it. Now we want to see, I'm going to tell you for example, I'm going to tell you that u sub e is equal to u sub b. That's, that's, a, that's a fact. Now you might say to yourself, How, does that make sense? And it, do, it should make sense to you because I said earlier on that a changing electric field makes a changing magnetic field. So they're always becoming one and the other. So say, for example, you had a, a X amount of energy in your electric field. Then after becoming a magnetic field and coming back into an electric field, you would have to have the same amount of energy in order for the whole thing to make sense. All right? So it does make sense that the electric and magnetic fields have the same energy densities. So how do we go about proving that? Well, that's a different story. It's not difficult, but it is a different story. So I'm going to show you two more formulae, which you should know at this stage. The first one is that the amplitude of the electric field is equal to the speed of light times the amplitude of the magnetic field. And also we have that the speed of light is equal to the square is, is, is equal to 1 over the square root of mu 0 epsilon 0. 
Now this is something which comes out of Maxwell's equations, and uh, I might prove that, I'm not too sure. I definitely won't be proving it in this video, but I might do that at some stage. So, what we want to do is use these two facts, or let's say these two in green, in order to prove that UE is equal to UB. So what I'm going to do first of all is rewrite um, my electric uh, energy density like so. I'm going to say that it's going to be 2 times U sub E over epsilon 0 to be squared, and that's going to be equal to E, and B is going to be equal to um, U sub B times 2 mu 0 all to be squared like that, or rooted, excuse me, not square root, not rooted, or rooted, not squared, how about that, alright? Now I know there's a bit of a shadow up there, but look, it's just, uh, it, this is kind of, this is obviously an amateur effort, I don't exactly have the best uh, um, video set up, but anyway, that's beside the point. So what happens if we plug these two values here into our E is equal to C times B? We're going to get the following, you're going to get that, um, we're going to get that the square root of 2u sub e over epsilon 0 is equal to something multiplied by the square root of u sub b 2 mu 0. Now we know of course that c is equal to 1 over mu 0 epsilon 0 so I could do, re rewrite it like this mu 0 epsilon 0. Now look we have square roots everywhere so we can get rid of them okay but I'll, I'll do one more step just just to kind of make this really rigorous okay or really really I'll do it really slowly okay and it's a, this is equivalent to saying like that. Okay, this of course is divided into that, and because they're both square roots as well, then you can just divide them straight out. We look, we have square roots on both sides, which you can get rid of. But also, if you look inside, we have look epsilon zero, which cancels with epsilon zero, two, which cancels with two, and mu zero, which cancels with mu zero. And you're left that the square root of UE is equal to the square root of UB, and as a result, the, the energy density of the electric field is equal to the energy density of the magnetic field. Alright, that's, uh, that's pretty straightforward stuff. And is there anything else I'd like to talk about? I think there's one more thing I'd like to talk about, and that's the irradiance and the pointing vector. Now, in a previous video, which I uh, suggest you look at, I proved the formula for the pointing vector. Now just to remind ourselves what the pointing vector is, pointing, it's uh, P-O-Y-N-T-I-N-G, it's not named after, it's named after a person, excuse me, that's the energy per unit area per unit time. Alright, and that's, look, it, it's in, it gives you, by the way, the direction of propagation is actually K, and because I said earlier on, the, the direction of propagation of your wave is, is the same as the direction of propagation of your wave number. And we know that the formula for this, S is equal to, what is it? I think it's 1 over mu 0 times E cross B. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I proved that. But that's beside the point. By the way, look, E cross B, of course, is going to be perpendicular to the electric magnetic, magnetic fields. And we know the wave number is perpendicular. So this goes in the direction of your wave number, or the direction of your, your wave. Now think about it. This is giving your energy in per unit area per unit time. But most light is unpolarized and kind of goes in every direction. And I'm not going to talk about polarization now, but essentially means that light, it isn't just, it isn't, for example, oscillating up and down or left and right. It's oscillating every possible direction. Not all at the same time, but it's, ne it, it, it's just, it's, ra it's, it's randomly oscillating in random directions, and we call that unpolarized light. So as a result, the average, this, this thing here, this gives you the energy in one particular oscillation, one particular polarization. So we need to get the average of this in order to work out what the average energy is. So the, I'm going to tell you that, and if you think about it, it actually makes sense, but it, it, the average, and these angle brackets say average, the average of your, of your pointing vector is your irradiance. Okay, now that makes sense. You, you now you might, you might just say to, say to yourself, "What is irradiance?" That's something that that I've been hearing, and I don't really know what it is. So I'll just quickly explain irradiance. Irradiance is power, and for some reason we do call it irradiance. So um, power is what it's it's energy per meter squared. So look, we have energy per unit area, energy per meter squared. Of course, there is this extra factor of time, but irradiance anyway is 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 an energy. It's amount of energy passing uh, per unit area. 
or your power. Just think about it, Say if you say it to yourself, irradiance is power and that is the average of your pointing vector which gives your kind of your instantaneous uh, energy in one particular direction of polarization. Alright, so that's all I've really got to say about that. Thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.